Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And here we are now with part 24 of this um, big bad buff build for beginners. And in the last part we covered all the masking and the fitting of all the glazing on the nose and on the tail. Now the tail here I've gone round with the Mr. Surfacer and blended all that in. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about in the first part of this video. So the, if you remember the cockpit glazing was not a good fit at all and we had huge gaps all around this curved area here. Um, I kind of wish I'd gone in with plastic card and filled it the same as I did on the tail. Um, but I didn't, I used, if you remember I used Mr. Servicer mixed with black paint. Now I've probably gone over about another six applications, yes about another six applications of Mr. Servicer. And then what I've basically done is sanded it because if you look at a real B-52 the actual glazing here is flat and the fuselage, although it's curved here, in this area it is flat, it is flattened out. So don't be too worried about getting in there and sanding it, which is what I've done. So we've got the area there with all the Mr. Servicer you can see. Let me just make sure you can see what I'm talking about. So you've got the area, you can see that thick grey area at the top there and then around the bottom. And what I've done, I've actually sanded that in flush and if I can catch it in the light you can see that I've actually put a flat on the fuselage all the way down the sides here so um and that is how it should be in real life um now for the beginners i've had a couple of people comment that this isn't a beginner's video um it is because i'm showing you a load of techniques that experienced modelers would already know so you know for those that think it's not a beginner's video it is and for those that think there's not a beginner's kit it's actually a level two so um yeah and remember this kit was made in 1968 and basically in 1968 models weren't made for men to build they were built for kids for Christmas presents and stuff so what we're gonna do I'm gonna show you some sanding um, with some various different sticks now here I've got the the good old trusty worn out 400 okay so I'm gonna use this first of all and I'm just gonna show you this just briefly how it's done so basically I'm gonna sand over here all right just to level everything out I'm not pushing hard I'm not putting loads of heat into it I'm just leveling everything out and I want the glazing to be flush with the outside of the fuselage okay so there we go so that's that done now you can see what's happened is our glazing is dull it's lost all its shine okay so what we need to do now is all, all that is is a series of thousands of scratches on the surface and it's basically stopped its reflectivity so what we need to do now is wet this I'm just going to dab it on my tongue and I've got a 7,000 grit matador stick and I'm just going to go around and just polish it and you can see the, the white on there that's your actual clear plastic and a little spot of Mr. Servicer so I'm just going to polish that up and down like that go around in circles go along go in all different directions if you can and then when you hear it like that it starts to get sticky okay that's when you need to stop so that's the that's the 7,000. Now this one here is marked as a 4,000. It's not. I think it's, I don't know what it is, but it's not 4,000. It's a lot finer than that. And then we're just going to polish it. Okay, and you can see there. Now if you've got the flory ones, this is the flory polishing sponge. So you've got the blue side and the white side. So again, it does exactly the same job. Okay, but I like using this one because it's newer and I am yes I am wetting it on my tongue which is disgusting but hey and when it starts to squeak that's when you're done and you can keep going as long as you like and you can polish that glazing up until it's crystal clear and um you need to get this done before you paint it obviously because once you've painted it you won't be able to do this but basically we can polish away and polish away until we've got rid of all the scratches if it has got a few scratches in it don't worry about it you know B-52s were heavily used and beaten and battered so um there we go so you can see that side there's done and that side there's done all right so we're going to end up with a small line around there you're going to see in the paint but that's fine because it had a frame around it anyway now on the front here on the lower end of the windscreen if you look back in the last video you remember there was no frame so what I need to do now is make a frame so what I've done is masked along the bottom here just up onto the glazing and now I'm going to put Mr. Surfacer on there and as always I'm not prepared I haven't got my Mr. Surfacer here but I'm going to put Mr. Surfacer on there now and then that will go up to the masking tape and it will form a kind of build up okay now as you know I never clean my Mr. Surfacer brushes because you don't need to 
There you go, that one was hard. I just dipped it in there and it's soft again now. So I'm just going to paint up to the masking tape quite heavily. And just build up some Mr. Surfacer in that area. Now I need to build some up down here as well. And I'm using the thicker stuff off the top of the bottle. And we're just going to build up to give us a window frame. Now if you are a beginner and you find this a little daunting, you don't really want to go this far, that's fine. Don't worry, you don't have to. Um, you can just mask up your windows, paint your model and see how it looks. Or you can go the crystal clear route and use that as your filler. But basically now that looks a mess, but once I sand it flat, it will look a lot better. Okay, so basically what I've done is put the masking tape where I want the edge of the frame to be. So obviously now this will build up on that tape. When I sand it down flush with the tape, peel the tape away, we will have a nice straight edge and a bit of a step. And I'll have to redo the masking in that area. Or just, you know, trim a little bit off of my masks. You can see it'll be careful not to just pull it all out again, which is what I've just done there. All right, so this is something that can be done to absolutely any model to blend in your clear parts. But basically what you're after is we know that the clear part is a separate piece of plastic glued in. We want it, when it's all painted and camouflaged, we want it to look like separate glazed panels, which is what it is in real life. We don't want it like a lump of plastic that's been glued in. So that's what I'm going for here. Now if I want to, I can use polishing compounds. I've got some here. The polish that you can use ordinary white toothpaste. The, the blue stuff's no good. But you need, if you get the um, ordinary old fashioned, you know, white toothpaste, that's fantastic for polishing clear parts. So there we go. Now I'm going to leave that to dry. Um, this is actually about two days after I made part 23 and I've literally, it's, it's literally 10 minutes work, you know, 16 hours, 18 hours dry and whatever. And that's, that is the biggest problem with work like this. It's just, it's, it's painful. <laughs> so I'll leave that light to dry and then we'll come back and sand it. Okay. So here we are. Uh, this is like three or four days later. Um, and it's a split second for you. I have just remasked the screen because I took the masking off because I thought we were there. And if you look, I'd just like to show you something. This is exactly what I'm talking about with, um, you know, doing seam work and everything, sanding it and leaving it and sanding it and leaving it. This has been, as I say, three or four days. And if you look, you can see here, you can see in there the seam line between the canopy and the fuselage. OK, so this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say, you know, you do your main scene, then your fuselage, it looks lovely. You paint it and everything. You come back a week later, bang, it's back. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm kind of in a way glad it's happened because um, that's what I can show you. And that's that's in there. You know, that's Tammy Extra Thin and Mr. Service. So there's nothing else in there. And you can see that that is actually sunk in. So if we actually put some more Mr. Service on there now, let it dry for 24 hours and sand it back it will probably be absolutely fine so that's what i've got to do now put some more mr servicer on there and then wait again um i mean here we are what are we now We're eight minutes or something into the video i think and you know this has been three days four days so this is the problem now this this build series is going to slow down particularly when we come on to doing the, the big joints on the wings and everything so I'm sorry guys, it's, it is slowing down. You were getting a video like every couple of days and now it's going to be a video every week or 10 days because of all this work that's going on behind the scenes, if you like. So I'm going to get some more Mr. Servicer on there now and then we'll get that sanded down and uh, see how it looks. Okay, so I've done this paint around this um, canopy now. Rather than wait for three or four days before I can do the next segment of the video and make you wait two weeks for a video, I thought we'd get on with something else. Now we've got the, obviously got the tail planes and the fin here. Now, not a lot of people know this, but the B-52 has a folding tail. Basically, because of its height, um, they made it so it folds down. So basically, if you can imagine the tail is here, 
it will actually fold over this way. And if you check your references, look on Google and you will see images of it folded over. Um, basically, it was done because it was so high and, you, you know, obviously the factories, they built them in, they had to be able to get them out. So they actually had it folding so it could be stored uh, in, a, in a hangar. Um, I've also got images, um, if we look down in here, somewhere near the front of this book, there is another image. There you go. That's another way of uh, getting over the tall problem. You can actually have it coming out of the hangar with like a, a bladder around it. So it's, um, so yeah, there we go. So um, basically they have a folding tail. So basically this joint here doesn't need to be perfect. So if we sand this and get this to fit nicely on here, which I believe I've already done from memory. It's been going on so long I've forgotten. Um, basically that will fit on there like that. And that looks absolutely fine. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. OK, so basically we don't need to glue it on. So it could be left loose and removable. Um, we can glue it on, but we don't need to be fitting it right now. And the same with the tail planes. They're a lovely fit as well. And also because they have they are actually uh, movable, change the angle of attack. If you haven't seen, I've actually made resin parts to do this on the um, model collect version. Um, so they don't have a good seam either. So they can just be left loose as well. And as I think I've mentioned before, if you do fit these and leave them loose, um, what you can do is, that goes on top of that one, there we go. What you can do, if you say, say this here, let's just use this corner of this mat. Say this is the corner of your um, wall here, and you've got a shelf in the corner. If you want to put the model on display, you can see that you can only get it back that far because the because the walls in the way or whatever is in the way. If you remove the tail planes, you can actually get it back that much further and save yourself some space. So I've, I've seen this on um, in shows. I've seen people displaying these and taking the, the tail planes off before they pack them away into their boxes. So we can actually, what I'm saying, what I'm getting round to here in a long Richard Maidley type drawn out way is basically you can um, paint these now. So, the first thing we need to look at is the striping. Now, if you look in the, these are the, let's look at the monogram instructions first. And it shows you here that we've got these walkways marked out and they're different either side. Um, and then we've got up here, we've got a red stripe only on one side of the fin. Um, because obviously when it's folded over, when it's folded over like this, you could walk on it. Okay. Um, obviously when it's up, you can't walk on it unless you're Spider-Man. Um, or the planes on its side why would it be uh, so basically we're gonna have a red walkway on here and the reason it's red is because the tail fin is actually black so that'll be um, done in red <clears throat> and this one here so i've got these marked top the side which is your best side these are actually identical parts as you know um so basically you can um decide which is the best side mark t t and t that's your tops and then on here you can see you've got the raised lines on here which are actually for placing your decals or doing your painting <clears throat> now excuse me now if you're doing this kit the monogram kit then you've got a very simple decal sheet and you don't get these stripes and they're telling you you should paint them if you've got the Ravel kit this boxing here um, then you will see at the back you've got decals and this is the decal sheet for the Revell kit which I'm not using but you can see you've got there's the red one for the fin and then you've got all these other ones here now if you are a beginner you might be better off doing what I'm doing now it might be a lot easier for you because fitting decals like this is very difficult to get them straight what I generally do because I'm not doing it I'll tell you what I generally do is, is get them down get the actual area you're going to put them on nice and wet Lay them down. So let's just say we're laying this one here. OK, lay it down. So that's decal number 21, which is actually the top one there as it happens. OK, so I would lay that down sort of further along and then pull it into place. And when you're finally happy with its position, just pull it from each end. Don't stretch it, but just move it up, move it down, move it up, move it down until it's straight and then don't touch it. Just let it go down. Once it's been down for sort of 10 minutes and the water's starting to dry out, you could go over it with a cloth. Um, a lot of people will roll a cocktail stick over like so. That might actually move it sideways. So you might be better off just gently dabbing it, just dabbing it down. 
and just going going with it. If you watch my um, C141 build, if you go to the latter stages of that, you'll see me fitting those decals there, and you'll see that what I'm basically doing is pulling them around to get them straight. And it really is not easy, so you might be better off painting them, because what we're going to do is paint the black colour first, and then we'll mask it, and then we, we can get our masking tape nice and straight. And if it's not straight, you can lift it, pull it down, lift it, put it down, lift it, take it off, screw it up, put another piece down. It's easy as pie. Um, with the decal, obviously, you only get one chance. So basically, that's what we're going to do. So we're looking at doing our tail planes and our fin. Now, you can see, I've, I've checked my references. This red line here is broken, and you can see the decal actually isn't. So the decal is actually incorrect. So we're going to be painting this on here and we're going to look at where this US Air Force um, is going to go. This I'll have to get the decals out. They are here. So this is my envelope with all my decals and these are the aftermarket decals you can get from Hannant's for like £2.99 or you can get them on eBay for £9. Um, so we've got... Do, 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 do. USAF 50677, there's our tail fin, so we can see, or tail marking, so we can see on there that is 10 millimetres high, so we need to leave a gap, so we'll put the masking tape and then we'll cut a gap, 10 millimetres, and then we'll have a gap in there. So let me get myself ready for this, and then we'll go from there. Right, so what I'm going to do initially to get these painted is choose my colours. Now as we said, this one here is going to be red and these are black. I'm not going to use jet black, I'm going to use NATO black XF69, which is a black that I stupidly didn't use on the undersides of the wings. If you go back to my video about spraying the wings, um, somebody pointed out I should have used XF69 as one of my shading colours. Why I didn't, I don't know. It must be because I'm getting old and senile or whatever, but XF69 is a fantastic black colour. It's a very, very, very dark grey. Um, it's kind of fixed between... The German grey and the tyre black, um, which is XF63 and XF85. So it's kind of in between those two. So really, really good colour to be using. So I'm going to use that for all the black striping we do all over it. And then it won't be sort of jet black in your face, but it will be this this very, very dark, uh, very, very dark grey. For the red stripe, if I spray the XF7 on the black, it will be very, very dark. It will be like a crimsony colour. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, spray it with yellow. Now, if you want a really, really dazzling yellow, first spray with white. If you want a really, really dazzling red, quick coat of white, quick coat of yellow, and then paint the red, and it really makes the red pop. Now, I don't really want the red to pop, but I want it to be fairly bright, so I'm just going to go a light coat of yellow just to tone this down, and then we'll put the XF7 over the top of that. So that's what I'm going to do, and then we'll mask it off and do all our painting. Right, so I've got the paints now, the lids off, and the first thing we need to be doing is stirring them. Now, a lot of people just stick the end of the brush down there and stir them. That's absolutely fine. But I've got one of these. Um, this is a Badger airbrush stirrer. I believe you can just use a cocktail stirrer or something. But the, the special thing about this is the end. If you look at the end shape on there, it's got that shape to it. And I don't think you get that with a cocktail stirrer. But these are lovely little things. Um, great little tool, and I these days I wouldn't be without it. Now, we can see one of the problems we got here is all this dried up paint on the outside edge here, which is, you need to be very, very careful of. And this is one of the problems with the Tamiya matte paints is they will do this um, when they're not used a lot. The other issue you have with Tamiya paints, if you pour them out into your airbrush, you will find that the, the paint actually gets on the edge here and then the, the, the top sort of welds itself to the, to the actual jar. So what I'm going to do to get rid of this, um, where is my knife? Here it is. To get rid of this hard stuff around the top, I'm going to get a paper towel here. In fact, I'm, no, I'm just going to grab an old one. But I'm going to get this, this hard stuff around the top off on a knife blade, like so. If it does drop in, don't worry about it too much because it probably will dissolve. And certainly with Mr. Surfacer, if you're using Mr. Surfacer, do this and actually let it go in because it will dissolve in, back in. I'm not sure that this will dissolve or not. I don't think it will. If it's too dry, then it won't, and you'll end up with lumps in your paint. So just getting rid of the um, majority of that, like so, and then we don't risk having that in our um, in our model, in our paint. So just give that a quick wipe, like so, and then I'll do the same with the red. We've got this build-up on here, 
just going to get rid of it okay just like so you can see it's really thick sludgy garbage and you don't really want that in your model and we've also got a lot on here so we can get rid of that it's just to basically make sure it doesn't fall in now the other thing you're probably noticing is all this paint built up on the outside here and that's all hard and crusty it's a good idea it's a good habit to get into and it's a habit I haven't got into is to wipe the top of your jars off before you actually put the lids back on you can see we've got a piece gone inside there so we get rid of that it's just a good little habit to get into and that way you don't get this hard build up on there and it stops the lid sticking on I've just put loads of red paint in the yellow but never mind just showing you really what not to do guys so there we go we can break that away like so And there we are that's those uh, that's all that stuff gone so you can see these hard little bits of paint like this you know they'd be no good for you at all and i've just actually managed to put some into my yellow paint so we'll see if we can get that out get that out of there see all is not lost everything's recoverable put that off of there and there's another bit there And there we go, good as new. Right, so with that little interval out of the way, let's get this paint stirred up. I'm going to fold this over, get these instructions out of the way, and I'm going to use this. Now, these things are absolutely brilliant. You can see it's come through the paper there onto the mat, which is why you don't want to be using a new mat. I'm going to get rid of all these hard bits. So, start off with the lightest colour first. There's a great big lump of red there. So, what we do is get the stirrer, we put the stirrer in the paint first and then turn it on. And just go around and stir the paint and keep it on the bottom. And it's going to rip up all the hard rubbish that's on the bottom of the jar. Okay, and then just come up into the paint just so you can see the top of the surface starting to. If you just stay in the bottom, you can see the top doesn't do much. If you come up the top, you can see it all getting stirred up there. Now that is beautifully stirred. Now what you can do now is stop and come out and wipe the end of it off. Or, this is what I do, leave it going and then gently, very gently come up out of the paint, very slowly. And you will see that you've got hardly anything on there. Just wipe the end of it off. I'm not going to worry about being too pedantic about having it perfectly clean. And then we can do the same with the red into the paint. And there we go, that's them all stirred up. So, nice mess on the bench we got here. So that's the paints all ready to go. Get rid of all these dried up bits of rubbish. And I think what I'm gonna do is throw this cloth away rather than risk having lumps of paint reappearing on the bench. So, another piece of towel. That there, I'm not gonna worry about. So, we're gonna start off with our spraying and I'm gonna use Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, which is my old favorite. Um, Okay, I'm going to use the airbrush. I'm on about 20 PSI. This is my Iwata uh, Revolution BR, gravity fed. And I've, I think this is an amazing little airbrush. I've had it for years and years and years. So it's, it must be nine or 10 years old now. And um, I think it's great. 20 PSI, roughly 1920 PSI. And I'm going to use, as I say, Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. And I'm going to thin the paints roughly 50-50. I'm not a drop counter. I don't worry about how much thinners I'm using and stuff. So. Basically, I'm going to just put a drop of the Mr. Color Leveling Thinners into the airbrush. So I'll use a pipette to pick it up. A couple of drops in there, nothing much, because we're only doing a tiny little bit of the yellow. Okay, always put the top back on your thinners and everything. One, it reduces the smell. Two, if you leave the top off, you are bound to knock it over. So here's something now that a lot of people disagree with, but this is what I do all the time. Got a paintbrush into the yellow paint. And then 
in onto the side of the color cup and I'm just going to mix that up and I'm pulling it up the side of the color cup just to see and you can see that it runs off it's slightly translucent and that's the kind of thickness I'm looking for okay now some people say thickness of milk but as <laughs> Duke says um, you know what milk uh, it also depends on what you're doing. Now, if it's a car body or something, I would tend to go nice and thin and lay it down really slowly and build it up. If it's a tank or something, you might want to make it a bit thicker to get your coverage in there straight away. Whatever, you pay your money, you take your choice, and everybody likes to do it their way. I mean, some people find that 30 PSI works better for them than 15 PSI. It depends what you're doing. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that say that, you know, airbrushing is is a science or whatever i can assure you it's not so I'm just going to put that to one side and i'm going to wipe the brush off and you'll also notice that i'm going from light to dark and the reason i'm doing that is i don't need to clean the airbrush out between colors if I, if I started off with the black i would have to clean the airbrush thoroughly because it would affect the yellow so what i can do now is just come along i'm just going to do a little test on the paper towel you can see there it paints lovely so i'm just going to go over you can see i've got these marks on here which revel of or monogram have actually put on there for us we can just spray that on lightly like so okay and we can see that that's lovely so just going to go along now down the other side up that side down that side you can see that i'm putting it on so thin it's practically dry within seconds and as i said this doesn't need to be perfect it's literally just a a base coat for the red and the red doesn't need to be perfect either because remember this model is going to be weathered we're not looking for perfection if you want perfection if you want to build a new looking d52 then you can by all means do it perfect but if you're doing it like me so letting that build up and i'm just gonna i'm just blowing it now with the air from the airbrush i'm not putting any paint on just drying it down and you can see that as it dries it goes matte there we are and i think we're out of paint now there we go so that's that done so what we could do now is just put a drop of thinners in there if you want to just put a drop of thinners in there like so okay just a tiny drop run it around with the brush okay there we go that's the color cup sort of cleaned out kind of and then we can just literally get the paper towel folded in half so it doesn't soak through and then just basically blow that out onto the paper towel like so and that is good enough so now we can take the just a couple of drops in there of the mr color leveling thinners okay that's that done lid back on and then we'll put the lid, stand the brush. And um, if you see me putting the brush to one side, I've got this old thing here. This is a, a brush clean, airbrush cleaning station. Well worth having. Yeah, what I always do with those, I shove a paper towel inside it. And basically that soaks up all the paint and it saves messing it up. So basically inside there, what we've got is a is an old paper, it's a, well it's an old one now, it was new when I put it in. Is a paper towel, you can see shoved in there. And that will catch all the paint that we spray in there rather than having it sitting in the bottom of the glass bowl and drying. So that uh, makes you think, you can see it's quite dusty as well. So that makes that last a lot longer and I've got my finger caught in there. And the other thing I've done with this, I've put a screw in here. Because otherwise when you, when you pick them up, if you pick it up like this, it keeps pulling out. So what I've done, I've put a screw in there to hold that in. So there's another little tip for you if you want to do that. So we've got our Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners in there. I'm going to take my red paint. <clears throat> again put the brush in a lot of people cringe like that you're going to hear some clattering now because the dustbin men are just pulling up outside so there we go so there we go you can see it's translucent pulling up the side nice and thin okay clean the brush off on the paper towel that's good enough put the paint to one side and then we can just come along, test our flow. And just paint the red over the yellow. And you can see that straight away, 
you're getting the red colour blowing through. That's why we go with the yellow first. Okay, so as I say, if you want a really, really bright, you know, really bright, say, um, tips on your propellers, go white first, then go the yellow. Um, if you want a really glowing red, go yellow first, and then I'm just blowing this to dry it, and then um, yellow first, and then your red over the top. I'm going to make sure I go well over the edges of this because we don't want any soft edges. We want a nice hard line to, so, because in reality this was a painted on line. We're doing it the wrong way round. Um, we're kind of painting this first and then painting the black over the top. So there we go. Some more down the bottom there. And there we are. Good to go. We go and there's a tiny bit of paint left in there just blow that through and that's our fin done if you want to dry it off a bit quick just blow it off with the air from the airbrush we can leave that on the side to dry okay and then we can come along with our another drop of mr color leveling thinners okay drop that in there just like so Run around with the brush just to give the colour cup a bit of a clean, although we don't really need to worry because it's black going in there. And then what we can do is using our paint cleaning station, this is what you do, you put it in there and just blow into it. Okay, that's that job done. All right, then another drop of Mr. Colour Lovely Thinners. Do, 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 just like so. Okay, don't forget to go do, 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 do when you put it in. And then we can come along with the black, or the NATO black, should I say. As you can see, it's like a very dark grey colour. We want this to be fairly thin, and we can see there, we drag it up the side of the colour cup. It runs off, it's slightly translucent, that's what you're looking for. Okay, so there we go, so that's that done. Now I'm going to put the airbrush down, I'm going to put the lid back on my red paint like a soul. Back on black. I don't think I'm going to need any more. And then we're going to look at our patterns and we can see that these tail planes are identical as we say they're the same parts. So you've got the correct pattern on one side but you also get the other side on the on the bottom so they're actually not very accurate. Now I've, I've made resin tail planes now for the B52G H models from Model Collect so um, what I've done is got rid of all that and actually scribed them. So um Right, it's like an advert, don't I, for myself. Just going to blow the dust off. There's a bit of dust on there where I'm doing a lot of resin sanding and stuff. So we can see here we've got a, a frame inside here. If you look on the instructions, you can see we've got a box inside there and then we've got a frame going around the outside. And if we catch it in the light, you'll see there's a, there's a frame around there and then we've got this box in here. So I'm just going to run around that, just like so. And you can see that it's black already, so it's not really going to take much paint at all. And if it ends up a bit blotchy, I really don't care because I want it to be kind of worn out. There we go, that's that one done. A bit more along there, a bit along there. There we go, put some more on. The other thing, guys, I'm doing this in front of the camera for you. You should be doing this in a painting booth um, with a mask on or whatever. Uh, I'm just doing this because it's on camera. So there we go. We've got this line here we can go around as well now. We go around that one. I've gone a bit heavy there, you can see the paint's a bit wet, so I can just dry it off with the air. Okay. Just blow around there a bit more. 
That area there is going to be quite difficult to mask. I'm sure we'll get there in the end. And there we go, that's that done. Now we've got plenty of paint left in the airbrush, so what I'm going to do now is just make sure there's no dust on there. And I'm just going to use some of this NATO black. You can see we've got glue mark or something there. So I'm just going to use some of this NATO black on the bottom of here. Just rather than waste it really, because the bottom of it's going to be painted black. Just dry that back with the airbrush. And we can put that down. Dry that back. And then we give the airbrush a clean and we're ready to start masking. Right, so they're dry now. They've been about 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do now is give them a very light coat of clear. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is when we come to mask it, because it's Tamiya paint and because it's matte, um, when we come to mask it, if we're going on and off with the masking, we may find that we sort of start to lift. So what I'm going to do is just give it a coat of clear. Also, um, when you're masking, if you mask on a gloss surface, it, you, you're more likely to get a nice crisp edge than if you mask on a matte surface because a matte paint tends to have a bit of a texture to it. Um, you know, if you look under a microscope, it would be like a, you know, like like sugar grains, um, whereas a gloss surface will be smooth. So you, you're much more likely to get a nice smooth surface, a nice um, tight line when you mask it. So I'm going to use this. This is Aqua Gloss. Um, from Alclad. It's made in the UK. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, Alclad2online.co.uk. Awesome stuff this is. But it's really weird. You do not shake it. If you shake it, you ruin it. Okay, so I don't know what happens if you shake it, mine, but they tell you do not shake it. And you literally just pour this into your airbrush, like so. Okay, and that's all you're going to do. Just put a drop in like that. As I say, always put the lid back on. There we go. And just going to check our flow. There we go. And then we're just going to spray, spray this on nice and lightly. Just build it up slowly. You don't have to. You don't want to flood it. Just build it up slowly, and that there is enough. It's just. It's just enough to just seal it. We're going to end up with like a semi-gloss finish. It won't be, you know, really bright and sparkly. There we go. Just like that. I'm saying here. Just following the edge of the lines. And there we go. You can see we've got nice glossy or semi-gloss lines. When that dries, it'll kind of dry back, kind of semi-gloss. It won't be gleaming because it's on there very thin. But if you want to dry it off quicker, you can load up the airbrush, but just be careful you don't move it around. If you've got a build-up like you have here, if you if you go in the air, you may actually push it across. And you don't want to do that. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, if I do it on the, these are my little resin weighing scales. If I've got a wet area like this, okay. If I've got a wet area like this, if I come along with the air to dry it, you risk doing that and moving it around. You see, exaggerated is that. Okay, so you, you've painted it, you've got it, you've got a nice layer down there, nice and wet, nice and glossy. And then you come in to dry it and you might start to move it around. So just be careful with that. Okay, so we, the gloss is all dried now and we need to start looking at actually getting some masking done. So what I'm going to do is use this pre-made tape. Now we could actually cut our own strips of tape. Absolutely fine. But the easiest thing to do, this is Izu tape. 
um, I get this from premiumhobbies.co.uk and it's called Micron Masking Tape and you can see it comes in numbers so we've got one is the 0.4 millimeter two is the 0.7 uh, three is one mil four is the 1.5 five is the 2.5 and six is the two quite why they've done that I don't know it should be the wrong way around but um, they're all sort of uh, this, this is eight meters eight meters five meters five meters so there we go so um really really handy very very handy for like making seat belts and stuff like that so really really good so I'm going to use the 1.5 I've gone around with my calipers my digital calipers are measured and I think 1.5 is about the right width I've got a brand new blade always when you're using a mask when you're doing masking you're going to be using a blade always put a brand new blade in um it's especially glazing it's always worth it otherwise you don't get a nice sharp edge so the first thing we need to do as I'm going to do is mask up this one here so I'm going to basically start up at one end okay and what I've done here these, these you're supposed to obviously cut these open and then there, there is actually a holder you can get from premium hobbies to hold them in but I don't want them to get dust on their edge so I just basically you can see I've cut a little hole in the in the packet there and then pull the tape through so that makes life a bit easier so I'll we'll grab the tape oh, come on I'll we'll grab the tape I've got it all twisted up now oh come on Mudge okay and I'm gonna put the tape down up here and it's in the wrong position lay it down here okay and then I'm just gonna trim it off like so okay now I've also got these special tweezers these are size zone non adhesive tweezers apparently they don't stick to the tape so um they do seem to work very very well and it looks as though I've got that perfectly in between the lines as luck would have it so basically now I'm going to do is just pull it straight and get it down between those lines now what I've noticed on this back end on this fin the actual these lines are closer together than those two lines so a bit strange but um oh no that's what I'll be looking at it's that line there this that line there we've got to look at isn't it so basically this is what I'm talking about when it comes to putting down a decal you'd have to lay the decal down and slide it around until it's in the right place whereas with the tape we can just lift it and put it down lift it put it down lift it put it down and um and there we go so there we are just like that just put it down between the lines and then rub it down now you can see it's gone a bit to the left there so I'm just going to lift it up again there we go no it's still not right so you can imagine how difficult it would be to get a decal to go in here especially when you consider you'd have the carrier film around the edge it would be easier to sand these lines off if you were going to use the decal so now the um, the line actually finishes down here so we can cut that off there just gently slice that and then we can put that down there you can see what I mean these these tweezers I can put down that piece of tape without it sticking to the tweezers which is really good um, normal um, normal tweezers you, you have a nightmare putting down tiny pieces of tape like that so there we go so that's that one rubbed in so now what I'm going to do is come along to the end and cut it off just like so like that and then I can take this piece and I'm going to use this piece across here in fact what I'll do is I'll just stick it there for now and then I'm going to put another piece down I'm going to have to get another roll of this I think for the whole aircraft in fact I've got so many B-52s to build I better get another 10 rolls okay so just put that down like that come along with the knife just cut it off now then again this end looks good so we'll pick this end up we'll just put the tape down 
Do you know what I'm thinking? I could have used thinner tape here. Because it's not actually sitting down inside those lines, it's sitting on top of them. Okay, so there we go. In fact, I think I'm going to change it to one mil tape. I'm just going to change it to one mil and see how it looks. And there we go. That's the uh, one millimeter tape. It does look a lot better. The tape's actually sat in between the lines rather than <clears throat> on top of it. So and you can see I put the tape over the end and cut it. So that's that one masked up, ready to go. And now we're going to look at doing the tail planes. Now I'm going to start with these awkward areas here. We've got this area here, which has got an awkward shape to it. And we've also got this area here, which has got an awkward shape to it. So I'm going to take a wider piece of tape, take a piece of 10 millimeter. This is the uh, Mr. Hobby tape. And what I'm going to do, because these tail planes are identical, I can use the undersides. So for that funny shape there, I can actually use, use this, um, this side to actually cut the tape out. So I'm going to have to do this under a magnifier, but I'll give you the idea and then I'm going to go away and do it again. But basically all we can do is just go around and just follow the scribe lines and just cut out the shape we want. Now I'm going to have to do this under a magnifier because I can't actually pick up with having to hold it under the camera as well. I can't pick up and see what it is I'm trying to do. But basically you come along and just, just like you do in a canopy, just follow the scribe lines, the, the raised lines. Okay, so I'll do that now off camera, then I'll come back and I'll show you how I integrate it all into the rest of it. Right, so that's that one there done. <clears throat> I just want to show you something I've discovered. Um, I don't know if this works with Tamiya tape, but it works with this Mr. Hobby tape. I've got a 600 grit hard sanding stick here, and I'm just sanding the tape over the raised lines. And what it gives you just keep going what it gives you is a so this is the wrong side isn't it? I shouldn't be doing it on here I should be doing it on the other part here let's just get another piece of tape let's get these bits off of here as well there we go so get another piece of tape so we're just going to put this across there Okay, and then if you get the 600 grit sanding stick and just sand, what happens is you end up with some very definite lines you can work to. You can see there you've got a very definite line there now to work to, which is which is much better than the uh, cocktail stick method. So uh, yeah, right. So there we go. All done now. Um, <clears throat> What I've done after I've put these little funny shape pieces on, I just went around the edges of them with some of this Fieho liquid mask and that just sort of helps clean up the edges and make the edges a little softer. So I don't know if you can see that one there close up, but it's um, it's just kind of rounded off the edges a bit, making them a bit nicer. So um, if there's anything untoward, we can always touch it up with a brush. I've also cut it around these vortex generators so that they'll be the camouflage colour um, I think they're going to look absolutely fine once they're done. So, um, this red stripe on here, basically now we need to remove some masking tape because you can see here we've got our USAF 605, sorry, 50677, which basically means this aircraft was built in 1955 and it was number 677, so uh, yes. Yeah. So um, the fin is measuring roughly 42 millimetres tall and if I measure to the bottom of there, it's 20, just over 20. So it's the bottom edge of the lettering or the insignia is halfway up the fin. So if we look at the decals that we've got with our kit, um, they are roughly 11 millimeters tall, 10 millimeters tall. So we call it 11. We'll call it, we'll call it 12, we'll call it 12, and then we'll have a gap of 14 millimeters, okay? So we'll have a gap in the, in the lines here of 14 millimeters. I'm not going to do it like this. I'm going to do it so it's like level with. That's how I've seen some images. 
So basically, um, if we measure the height of this, this one is 130 millimetres, so half of that would be uh, 65. So 65 gives us our centre line. So if I grab a pencil, which is here. OK, so 65, that's going to be roughly our centre line. And if we're going to go 14 millimetres, we want to be 7 millimetres either side of that. OK, so 7 millimetres either side, so that's there and there. OK, and then our decal is going to fit in there. Now we want to make sure we're going to be parallel. Now this sits on top of the fuselage and the back of the fuselage, as you can see, is dead straight. So I'm going to use my cutting mat to make sure we get things parallel. So I'm going to put the put it down on the mat like so. Let's get the light a bit better for you. So I'm going to put it down on the cutting mat like so, so it's parallel on that bottom edge. So we've got the rudder there and we've got the leading edge there is parallel. So if I come along with my rule, OK, and I get the rule parallel from above. Now, I'm going to have to check this because I'm not looking straight down on it like you are. So I'm standing up now to do this. So I line the rule up with the pencil line on the top. Line the rule up so it's parallel on the top. So I'm just going to draw a line across there. Very lightly and then do the same down here. Get that parallel there. Okay, so now we've got two parallel lines on there, and that's where our decal's going to sit. So what I'm going to do is cut the masking tape off so that the decal sits in between them beautifully. Now, I'm not sure whether to cut them on that line or cut them 90 degrees so they kind of like this, but not... I, I want them to be... I'm just going to check my references and then I'll come back. Okay, so that's um, cut out now. I've actually cut them perpendicular to the tape, so they sort of end on an angle but they're cut perpendicular to the tape. And I've cut the decal out of the sheet and we can just try that in there now and we can see that it fits in there slightly off. It fits in there beautifully. So there we go, that's how it's going to look. So now the next thing we've got to do is put this decal away so we don't lose it. So we'll drop that in our envelope. I keep my decals in a hard back envelope while I'm sort of working on the model and then you know they're not going to get damaged. Too many times these days, manufacturers, they get the decal sheet and they put it in the bottom of the box face up all the plastic sprues on top, it's rattling around on a ship, it's rattling around on a train, in a truck, in a van, in the back of your car on the way home, whatever, and the plastic sprues are all just vibrating and ruining your decal sheets. So uh, I always put them in, a, in an envelope like this as soon as I get them and then I, I know that they're going to be safe as soon as I start a build. So, um, right, there we go. So the first thing to do now is paint this red and I'm going to paint these black. The reason being, if anywhere there's a gap like on one of these corners and the paint's going to bleed under, the paint that bleeds under is the same colour that's what you're trying to mask. OK, now if I sprayed this fin black and some paint weeped under the corner there, I would end up with a black line over the red. But if I spray it red first, the paint that weeps under will be red, that will dry and it will form a seal. So when I paint it black, the black won't go under the tape. Yeah, and I'll do the same on here. And then the, if there's anywhere that it's going to go through, the, the camouflage colour is going to go through, then it will be, be basically over black paint. So I'll just paint it black paint first, black paint will leak in there and that'll seal it. OK, so because basically when you put, if you look at it enlarged, when you sort of overlap masking tape in the corners like this, say, you're, you're basically doing that. OK, and then so if you think of the rule as the surface you're masking and this card is the... Is the masking tape you're basically doing that and you've always got a gap in there where the tape use my knife as a pointer you've got a gap in that corner where the tape goes up over the next one sometimes it's best to just cut through them both and have them butted but quite often you'll find when you're doing stuff like this where you've been laying it out you may have slightly stretched the tape and then it will pull away and you end up with a gap so um, sometimes it's better to let it overlap and then let the paint wick underneath at the end of the day, any problems, we can go around with a little brush and touch up afterwards anyway. These things in real life were touched up all the time. If you look at one of the best um, examples of that is an F-14. There's some pictures of them, you know, like this. You can see the back of them and they were just covered in touch-ups. So, uh, you know, when they've gone in with a brush or a little air gun and they've just blown in some paint, you get all the different colours. So, we're going to get this painted now and then I'll be back.
Right, so I've got the paint mixed up. It's quite a thin mix. Now, if you're a, a fan of Ron's model ships, uh, Ron Carverley's model ship channel, um, I gave him some hints and tips on airbrushing and everything. And I said that when you do this, you know, when you do masking, paint the colour over first. Unfortunately, what he did, he went in with a brush with some very thin paint, laid it down quite heavily, and the paint really did wick underneath. And because he had the, the grainy finish on the paint, um, the, the tape didn't go down too well. So he ended up with this sort of paint all wicking underneath. You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be putting it on with a brush. You want to airbrush it on and let it wick. Okay, so this is actually a very thin mix. This is probably 70, 80% thin as 20% paint. And then what I do is just lay this down and I want to sort of get it quite wet because if it is going to wick, then it's, it will only wick when it's wet. So there we go, I put it down quite heavily. But because the paint is so thin, once all the thinners dries away, there'll be nothing left on the surface. So you won't end up, even if you had a big run, big run in it, it probably would just dry out. You can see up here, there's a quite a wet area there. I just come back and just dry that off quickly. You can see there's no pooling, there's no puddling, no nothing. Because it's so much thinner, it just evaporates. So there we go, do that again, make it nice and wet. Just go around there. And then you might want to sort of feather out over the edges a bit, just to so you don't get a build up of paint in that area. And there we go. And anything that wicks under there now, as you can see, I've concentrated up here because that's where the tape's overlapping. So anything that's wicked under there now will be red. And then when we take the masking tape off, all we will see is a nice sharp line. You shouldn't get any, you shouldn't get any wicking of any um, black paint at all. All right. So that's how we do that. So I'm going to go on now and do the blacks. Get rid of that. I'm going to do the black, and again, I've got the black, just do a little bit of a test. So we'll come along now with our black paint, just do the same, paint over the masking tape, quite wet. And there we go, job done. Bring that back. Do the same on the other one. And there we are. And because this paint's so thin, as I say, you don't get any, you don't get any sort of raised areas or lumps and bumps because you're not building any paint up at all. It's just. It's all solvent, really. There we go, job done. Let's go over those Vortex generators because they've had the paint rubbed off them. Get the last tiny dregs of paint onto there. No, nope, nothing's going to come out. So there we are, that's them painted over. So they're all ready to go now. Now, I can't continue any further with this because I'm, I could do this, I guess. I could do the fin. Yeah, let's do the fin. Right, so I'll spray the fin and we'll start off with some XF85 black. I've made a mixture up, roughly 50-50 or maybe 60% thinners, 40% paint. And we're just going to give this a once over just to give it a base coat, to so give it something to work on. So basically, I want to be able to hold this and not have to worry about getting any finger marks in the paintwork. So a piece of blue tack on the end of a coffee stirrer just push that up in there that'll hold it in place and then oh, teeth stick that on in there and then that'll hold that in place for us to spray it okay so we can put that out of the way just check our flow lovely and then I'm just going to basically staying in the direction of travel it's a good thing to remember with aircraft stay in the direction of travel and paint I'm just going to put a fan on because it will help to blow the paint vapours away from me. So there we go, and it's also going to blow everything across the bench. Right? So there we go, right. We just lay this down on here. Let's just say spraying in the direction of travel. Now 
but I don't know if that's moisture there or if it's grease but it looks like it's moisture because it's drying. You can also see now, if you ever wanted to depict rust on sheet metal work or something, it's quite a good way to do it. Thin coat of black over the, um, over the red. There we go, and the paint's all gone because it's su such a thin mix. So I'm going to carry on with this, I'll do it in my booth. Um, and then I'll come back when I'm done. And there we go, all done. That's, so that's sprayed in the XF85 and uh, happy with that's come out. I'm going to let that dry and then we'll do the um, the patchwork and everything the same as I did on the wings and that'll be part of the, the next video or one of the videos going forward. And now you can see here through the light you can see where I've got those cuts that I made and it makes those trim tabs look separate so that's a, you see now the, the light coming behind there. So that makes them look a hell of a lot better. So um, here we go. I'm happy with how that's come out. Looks in, looking good. And you can see that coming through is some of the effect where I've used that Halfords primer on it. Um, I don't know if Halfords have changed the formulation of their paint or if it's this particular plastic. I've never seen this happen before. I've seen the, the effects that the primer actually shows up the model paths of the paint and everything. But generally as soon as you put something over it, it covers it. But we can see here that we've still got these little patterns here. So. I'm not worried about it, it's going to be weathered to hell, you know, if it was a car body or, you know, something that was going to be looking new. And the other thing, before anybody says, I know this is matte, um, B-52s, originally the Ds, when they were painted with their black camouflage, they were like a, a, a gloss, they were a, a quite high gloss black. But if you look at them in the field, you know, you see them all lined up in their uh, bunkers and that in Guam and everything, they, um, they certainly don't look very glossy to me. And they are very much like patchwork quilts as well. So we're going to be weathering this. We're going to give it a nice weathered look. Nothing too much, but nice weathered look. And uh, it'll look um, it'll look lovely when it's done. So uh, yeah, once we've got the the work done on here, um, the after you know the the fading and everything, the the, the post shading, um, then we'll give it a bit of a gloss coat. I'll probably take the masking tape off first. Give it a bit of a gloss around here for the decal to go down on. Um, also perhaps a gloss coat over where the masking has been because you often get an edge on the paint and if you give it a gloss coat you can soften that edge and break it down. The other thing you can do is very very lightly sand it but you need to be very careful particularly with all these raised panel lines. So uh, anyway there we go um, what I might show you as well is I might show you sanding the decal if I can but I think it's going to go over a panel line so I may not be able to but um, yeah sometimes you can sand the decals back and make them look very very uh, very worn and weathered as well. So I'm going to call that a day for this video only for the sake that I want to get something out there because you haven't had anything for a few days. So um, I would go on and do the camouflage on the fins. But as you all know, I'm using this, the Viejo Air War Colour Series for painting this model. And as suggested by Mr. James Mower, um, he suggested that I get some flow improver. And just like me, being a forgetful twat that I am, I forgot to order any. So I've just ordered some on Amazon now. So I should that should be here tomorrow or the day after. And um and then we'll get on with uh, getting some spraying done on the um on these fins. So we'll get them fins, tail planes even, and we'll get them done top and bottom as well. I suppose I could have painted the bottom of these, couldn't I? Never mind. So um anyway, thanks for watching. This has been part 24. Part 25 will be up with you soon. Um, if we get on with this paintwork and stuff and we let that uh, Mr. Service and dry around the uh, windscreen, then we can really start to push forward. Because once that's done, I think it's just a case of getting the whole thing together. I'm considering doing some of the camouflage paint on the wings. I don't know. We'll see. So um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all soon. Today is, what is it today? Wednesday, no, it's Thursday. Thursday the 29th of uh, October 2020 so hopefully I will have a VC10 video up for you later as well for your uh, for you Patreon guys and PayPal guys so uh, see you all soon thanks for watching bye for now